In this video, we're going to consider the chain rule for differentiation. The chain rule is a very versatile rule. It allows you to differentiate a range of function types over and above what you can use the power rule for. But the challenge with the chain rule is to know when to use it, what types of functions can we use a chain rule on versus the power rule or some other differentiation rule. The chain rule is technically for differentiating composite functions. That is, remember, a function inside another function. But composite functions manifest in a range of different ways. So learning to recognize what is a composite function and therefore when you can use the chain rule is a bit of a challenge and does take some experience. These are all examples of composite functions, but you can see they look a little different. Well, they look quite different. And later in this video, we'll look at some further examples of composite functions that we can use the chain rule on. So we'll get to these in a moment, but let's start by considering what the chain rule actually is, what it says, and some of the versions of the chain rule that you might see, some of which are more instructive than others. So the first version of the chain rule that a lot of people will learn is not the entire chain rule, it's just one specific example of the chain rule. It's the chain rule used on functions that look like this, and it is applicable, but it's not widely applicable, so therefore it's not the best version to use. So students will often learn that if you've got a function in the form ax plus b, or something like that, inside a bracket with a power, I mean the letters are going to change, but roughly something that looks like number x plus number and then a power, they'll learn that that is when you use the chain rule. And it certainly is, but it's only one type of scenario in which you would use the chain rule. And essentially they learn a formula. They learn that f prime of x, the derivative, is going to be equal to n times a, so it's essentially the power times the number here, and then leave the bracket alone like this and then take one off the power. And essentially they'll just learn to apply that formula every time. But of course, when you then get to something like this, which is slightly different, or you get to these trigonometric functions, which are completely different, they don't look anything like this, then students don't know what to do. They've reached the limit of what their version of the uh, chain rule will tell them uh, what to do next. So that version is applicable, but in very limited scenarios. So I don't recommend that you learn that as a rule. What a lot of students will learn instead is this version of the chain rule. This is probably the most widely uh, seen version, which says if you're taking the derivative dy dx, and remember that functions that are set up as y differentiate as dy dx using that notation. If it's an f function, it's going to be f prime of x. So that's just a notation difference. But they'll learn basically that the derivative dy dx is equal to uh, dy du times du dx. Now this u function has to be introduced, it's called a u substitution. This method is per perfectly va valid, and we're not gonna work any examples using it, but if that's a method that you've learned or you've seen in the past, that's great. It's still not the most instructive one, and it gets a little messy. My issue with this particular version is that students just forget the process. They forget what the u is. Where does the u come from? The u's never in the question. They've got to introduce the u, causes a lot of confusion, and then the working could be a little bit messy. I'm gonna show you an easier version, but this version is okay, I don't mind that version. But if you think about what a composite function is, right, it's a function inside a function. This is a function inside, that function is inside, x cubed is a function inside the cosine function, 4x is a function inside the sine function. These are all composites for that reason, a function inside a function. That is the key point. So let's say you've got a function, f, and it's got a function inside it. So for example, this cosine function would be our f, but it's got a function inside, x cubed. This sine would be our f, but it's got a function 4x inside. Let's just say that in general, that function inside is called u. Okay, so we're just dealing with some f of u function. And let's say we want to differentiate that. So we want to take the derivative with respect to x of this f of u. Now, all composite functions look like f of u. Not all composite functions look like this. And this doesn't really tell you about the fact that you're working with a composite function. But this says that you've got a function on the outside f, you've got a function inside u, and that's what you're trying to differentiate. So the setup here already looks more like what you're gonna see in reality. But the important thing is the way that this sort of formula or method comes out, because what the chain rule actually tells you to do is really, really simple. You just differentiate the overall function, the outside function, if you like. You differentiate the inside function, and you multiply those two together. It's just two derivatives multiplied together. And in this version of the formula, you can just say, right, well, the derivative of the overall function 
is just going to be f dash u. And how you find that f dash u will depend on the type of function. If it's trigonometric, you'll need to take a certain approach. If it's something else, you'll need to do something different. We then multiply that to the internal function's derivative, but we're just going to call that u dash. So it's just times multiplied by u dash. The reason I like this one, essentially it is easy to see that you're just differentiating the inside function, you're differentiating the outside function, the f function, and you're multiplying them together. This is what this tells you as well, but the problem here is in your questions there is no internal function, like obviously, or no u function. You've got to introduce that. This one is just far more widely applicable and easier to and quicker to, uh, to use in practice. So let's go ahead and we're going to basically think of these examples using this formula. And we're even going to go more simple than this formula because all that formula is telling you to do, like I said, is take two derivatives and multiply them together. So let's start with this um, kind of straightforward example here. This one we could use this limited formula on, but we're going to take this other approach. And we're going to say that we're going to differentiate the overall function first. That's going to be our like f dash part. But to, you, to do that, we're just going to use the normal power rule. So you just bring the power in front, so it gives you the 3 in front. Leave the bracket alone, just like as though that bracket were a big x, just like as though this was x to the power of 3. So you bring the power in front, leave the term alone, the x, or the 4x plus 5 in our case, reduce the power by 1, and that is our first derivative. That's the f dash u part. The u is the 4x plus 5, so we need to differentiate that. That's just a, so a linear function. The derivative of 4x plus 5 is 4 from the power rule. So we're just going to multiply this by 4. We can tidy this up. That's essentially the derivative now taken. Super quick, super easy. We can now tidy up by multiplying the 3 and the 4 together. And we're going to get 12, 4x plus 5 to the power of 2. So this form is very common for the chain rule. It's probably the first form that you're going to learn. But it's only one example of a range of different uh, versions of the chain rule. So that's the first one. Let's move on. This type here is also quite common. It's just a little bit different from this one. So you can see they're almost the same. I've just introduced a power on the x here. But that basically makes this rule here no longer usable because this only works for ax plus b. You can't have ax to some power. So that rule is already gone out the window. And now we need to focus in on a better way to think of it. So we can go straight to our derivative. This is in a differentiable form. So g prime of x. So again, we're just going to do the same thing. We'll take the overall derivative, which is bring the power in front, leave the bracket alone, take one off the power. That's essentially just a power rule. Now we just multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is like our u dash. This time it's still going to be the power rule, but it's going to be a little trickier than up here. Here the derivative, which is 4. Here the derivative is going to be the derivative of this term, which is 12x squared. So we get 12x squared. And that 12x squared is playing the role of our u dash. Again, we can just tidy up by bringing these together. So that's going to go as 36x squared and then times the uh, bracket part like this. So again, just a derivative multiplied to another derivative. That is all the chain rule is. If you only take one thing from this video, just take the fact that the chain rule is generally massively overcomplicated. It's just two derivatives multiplied together. Okay, so let's apply this to the function y equals sine 4x. So again, you've got a composite function. It's the sine is the outside function. 4x is the inside function, so it's in the right form to use the chain rule. So this time we're going to notate our derivative as dy dx because we're using a, a y notation. So the derivative of the outside function sine is just cosine, and you'll get that from a formula sheet or just by uh, knowing that. So sine differentiates to cosine. That is something you'll need to just learn. So effectively at that point we've done our f dash u part. Now we want to multiply by the u dash part, the internal function's derivative. So the derivative of 4x is just 4, so we just multiply that by 4. And again, you could tidy up by bringing the 4 to the front, so that becomes 4 cos 4x. So again, just following the same pattern, derivative times derivative. Same again here, same again here. So it doesn't matter that that's a trigonometric function. You are essentially doing the same thing. That's what a lot of people don't get about the chain rule. They think it's a different rule every time. But it's the same rule, just manifesting in slightly different ways. So again here, um, fairly similar, but I've upgraded this one, I guess, to a cubic function rather than just a linear function. But again, we can just go straight to our derivative. So dy dx in this case is going to be equal to, well, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we get negative sine x cubed. 
And notice in all of these cases, we've never changed the inside of our bracket. The inside of the bracket always stays the same. That's a really important point as well. And then we're going to multiply that by the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. So again, at that point, we have got the derivative. We just want to tidy it up. We're going to bring that term to the front. So we get minus 3x squared times sine of x cubed. So different types of example, very common types of example of using the chain rule. But you can see they're all following the same rule and working quite effectively with this version of the chain rule. This one, like I said, is not even applicable to anything other than the first one. So that one can kind of go out the window. This one would be applicable where the working is far more cumbersome. I mean, far, far more and far more chance of making a mistake. That's why I'm really emphasizing to learn and go with this one. So what we're going to do now is take a look at some further examples of scenarios in which we can use the chain rule. So let's go ahead and look at some further examples of when we can use the chain rule for differentiation. But before we do so, just remember that I've emphasized this version of the chain rule. So it can be written in different ways, but this one essentially gets to the heart of what the chain rule is. First of all, because it's a function inside a function, so the u function inside this f function here. And secondly, because of the nature of what the chain rule says, which is take derivatives of the outer and inner functions and multiply them together. That is really all the chain rule says. So we're sticking with this version of the chain rule. So let's take a look at this guy first of all, and then we'll have a look at this. So it's an exponential function, this is a log function, this is a more uh, exotic version of a trigonometric function. And these are useful in addition to the ones that we saw earlier. So these are some of the common forms for the chain rule. So this is in a differentiable form, so we can go straight to our f prime of x. The way that an exponential function differentiates is just to leave the function alone. So for example, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. This one in our first part, our f dash u part, so differentiating the whole function, the outer function. 3, by the way, is just a constant. It's not playing any part um, in the differentiation directly. So our first part is just going to be 3e to the 4x. We want to then multiply that by the derivative of the internal function, which is the 4x part. So multiply by 4. And that is essentially the derivative done. Again, just two derivatives multiplied together. 3 times 4 is 12, so we can tidy it up to 12e to the 4x, and that is the derivative. This one, natural log function, so the internal function here is the x to the 4. That's playing the role of the, the u part. The overall function is a natural log, so log to base e, shorthanded as ln. And we can just go straight to our derivative here as well. This time we're going to use dy dx. Again, the 5 is just playing uh, the role of a constant. So we'll just keep that in front for the time being. When you differentiate a log function, you basically get 1 over this internal part. So it's going to be 1 over x to the 4. And that is the derivative of the natural log of x to the 4. Or, or part of it anyway. We're going to have to do the, the other part in a second. But when you differentiate a natural log, that is basically how it manifests. So it's 1 over that part. Um, and then the, the sort of chain rule part will kick in. So these individual differentiation rules, like how to differentiate a sine, how to differentiate an exponential or a log, etc., these are things you'll need to learn in addition to using the chain rule or to use the chain rule effectively. The chain rule tells you how to do the overall thing, but the individual things, including the power rule, still need to be part of that. So again, we just multiply this now by the derivative of the internal function, the u dash part, which would be the derivative of x to the 4, which is 4x cubed. And um, that just comes out to then be 4. We can multiply these all together. 4 times 1 times uh, 5 is 20. So we get 20x cubed over x to the 4. In this case, you could simplify that down, which quite often happens with log derivatives, just because of the nature of this fraction part. So divide in top and bottom by x cubed, we would end up with 20 over x to the 1, or just 20 over x. And, and that's basically the way that it works for an actual log. So basically the way it manifests is the derivative of the function uh, over the function. Okay, right, let's move on. So we'll have a look at this uh, g function. So this one is trigonometric like the ones we saw earlier, just a little bit more complicated. It is in a differentiable form, but I would say if you've got a sine or cosine to a power, you might want to rewrite it in a more intuitive form. So remember this power here, the cubed, really means the sine of 4x all cubed. So I'm going to put that in a, in a second bracket like this. 
And the reason why that's important, it makes it a little easier to see where your internal and external functions are. So the internal function here is sine to the 4x, whereas it looks here like it's just the 4x, but sine, um, sine 4x, not to the 4x. Sine 4x is the internal function. This cubic function is the external function. So we need to keep that in mind for when we're using our chain rule. This is a more complex version. This does tend to catch a lot of people out. I just want to put it in here because it's an example that could potentially come up for you. So we can go to our derivative now. This is a differentiable form. It's just not ideal. This is a more ideal form, makes it more intuitive as to what to do next. So going back to our rule, what does it say? Well, it says differentiate the external function, the overall function, the outside function first. So bring in the three in front, just like we were doing with the brackets earlier, leaving the bracket alone, reducing the power by one, that is effectively the power rule. Now we want to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of sine 4x is again the chain rule. We're using the chain rule twice essentially here. We saw stuff like this earlier. In fact, we saw this particular one earlier and we saw that it differentiates to four cos 4x. So that would be four cos 4x by a second use essentially there of uh, the uh, chain rule. So now we can just tidy these up. Four times three is 12. So we get 12 sine um, 4x squared. So you can put the squared back there if you wish, times cos 4x. So these ones are not super common, but if you do come across one, sine or cos with a power, you should expect a final answer which contains two trigonometric functions. That's always gonna happen in that type of example. So if the chain rule is new to you, focus on the examples we looked at earlier, the more fundamental examples, they're probably the ones you'll see most often, but just note that the chain rule, especially this kind of way of thinking about it, this version is applicable directly to a bunch of functions. And all we're ever doing is multiplying the two derivatives together. That is what all of these examples have got in common. If you see that common approach, then it kind of in a way makes the whole thing easier because you're not trying to learn or use a different rule every time, you're using a consistent rule across all functions. The chain rule is highly versatile, it's a highly useful rule in differentiation, so spend some time making sure that you're down with how this works and practicing uh, some example problems.